Hello, my name is Bob Kraus. I'm the current annual conference moderator. And to my left is Jim Beckwith, who's the annual conference secretary. We are really looking forward to gathering together with you in Charlotte, North Carolina from June the 29th until uh, July the 3rd uh, to enjoy annual conference uh, together. The theme this year will be Move in Our Midst. Uh, which is also the title of a pretty popular hymn within the Church of the Brethren. This year would have been the 100th birthday of Ken Morse, who wrote that hymn. Uh, let me share just a couple of the phrases uh, from, from this hymn. Move in our midst, thou Spirit of God. Strike thou our hands to lead us aright. Guide us forever, show us thy way. Strike from our feet the fetters that bind. Kindle our hearts to burn with thy flame. As we gather together in Charlotte this summer, it is our hope that the Spirit of the living God will move in our midst to touch and transform our lives. We hope you are looking forward to being in Charlotte. Let me tell you just a few things about what you might expect when you are there. It is a family gathering when we get together for annual conference, not just for us to be family to each other in the church, but also for each of our families if we are able to bring them along. So there will be activities for the children and activities for the youth and for a variety of groups. There will be uh, an opportunity to go to the NASCAR Hall of Fame uh, directly across the street from the Convention Center for those who would like to do that. There's the Billy Graham Home and Library, about 10 minutes drive away with no admission charge. And then there are parks with fountains and flowers and sitting areas uh, in downtown Charlotte that might be a neat place for families to go and kids can stretch their legs. The Convention Center itself in Charlotte is only 17, year old, 17 years old, so it's uh, quite a facility. has its own food court, and there's a wide variety of restaurants nearby. So one of the things that we want you to think about as you're preparing to come is how we might make an impact upon the city of Charlotte, that it might be known that the brethren have been present in that place. Some of that will be our attitudes and how we uh, deal with uh, staff of the hotels and convention center, and, and some of it will be a, a special project, a witness to the city of Charlotte, it's being planned that we'll bring some school supplies and they can be shared with some of the children in the city who have greatest need. And we'll have more information about that on the website. You can find a lot of things at www.brethren.org slash AC for annual conference, just the AC. The mission of annual conference is to unite, strengthen, and equip the Church of the Brethren to follow Jesus. Uh, last year at annual conference, the delegate body uh, chose to accept the recommendation of the annual conference revitalization committee. And part of the recommendation was that we work uh, with a greater sense of intentionality at spiritual renewal, both uh, individually and within the life of our church. We've taken that recommendation very seriously. And, uh, and so we've kind of reshaped some of how we do annual conference this year. For instance, uh, all of Sunday will be devoted to doing uh, God's work, and we'll do that through worship, through teaching, and through a series of equipping workshops. We've invited Philip Yancey, uh, who is a fairly noted uh, author and conference speaker, to be one of a number of speakers who uh, share with us uh, during these gatherings on Sunday. We also have nearly uh, 28 equipping workshops where uh, we will be sharing uh, specific tools that will help uh, us both as individuals and within our congregations to work at the whole issue of uh, spiritual renewal. A and then Sunday evening will conclude with what we're calling a concert of prayer, which is this wonderful blend of prayer and singing that we believe will be very inspiring to you. Another piece that we have worked on last year is to have delegates sit seated around tables, and that will happen again this year. It's been really helpful to have a mix 
of people from various districts who can sit together and talk together and try to discern the mind of Christ together. That's what our purpose is. So we hope that you'll look forward to this opportunity to have your place assigned at a table uh, where you can then get to know some other folks from around the country and, and interact with them as we do our business together at annual conference. Well, while the roundtables were a huge hit among the delegate body, uh, there were those who were non-delegates who weren't quite as thrilled about being kind of on the outside looking in. And so we took that concern very seriously this year, and we're going to utilize the space in the conference hall in a little different way so that non-delegates will be as close to the stage as delegates themselves. And we're hoping that you'll, you will like the way that uh, we're going to be using that space this year. Let's talk just a little bit about the business and how we do that how we do business in the Church of the Brethren at the annual conference. You will receive a uh, booklet uh, someplace along the line in the month of May. This is last year's. And in that booklet, you'll find all kinds of information. Part of it will include the opportunity to read the reports. Reports come to us from agencies and committees and, and uh, the various representatives that we send to, to different bodies. That's in the first part. And then there's a section in the back where the business item themselves, uh, items themselves are presented. Some of them are queries. A query is something that comes to conference as a question from a congregation or from a district. Some of the items of business are going to be resolutions or statements, and those generally come from the standing committee or one of the agencies or one of the annual conference committees. They're handled differently, and so we'd like you to be aware of that. The reports are simply received as being the work of the church and what we've been doing. A query comes to the standing committee. That's that group of delegates from the districts who meet first from Wednesday until Saturday prior to annual conference itself. And the standing committee delegates make some recommendations about how a query should be handled. They might say that it would be good to have a study on it. They might refer it to one of the agency staffs. They might uh, suggest that, that we just simply affirm it as it is or that we respectfully return the query. What you will deal with if you, as you come as a representative from your congregation is that recommendation from standing committee about the query. And as delegates, then when we're seated there, we'll have the opportunity to either say, yes, we approve what standing committee has recommended or we'd like to change it slightly with an amendment or we don't want to take that answer, at which time then we have to decide for ourselves what we're going to do with it. Now it's a little different with the statements and the resolutions when they come. They come uh, with a lot of information from one of our committees or our staff, and we don't really uh, deal with all of that. Uh, we, we, we deal with uh, uh, the recommendation from, from um, from, from the, uh, the recommendations that are in the back with, with these resolutions. Some, sometimes there's a certain section that will say that. Sometimes the uh, whole article itself, like the vision statement, is the recommendation. And then that's the part that we get to decide. Is this how we want it worded? Do we have a little something different? We want to deal with it. And so those are the new the, the items of business that we get. One thing further to say about it. There will be some new business items. That's something that comes fresh this particular year, and then there are items called old business that have been dealt with in previous years, and we come back to say, okay, how far has the study gone with it? Are they ready to make recommendations, and, and where do we go from there? So that's just a general overview of it and how, how we do business together, and uh, we're going to talk just a little bit about how you get ready for that then. There are a variety of ways that you can prepare for annual conference. Uh, it's likely you're already uh, involved in one of those ways if you're watching this video because you're probably attending your uh, conference briefing that uh, is hosted by your district. Uh, another way is to read the book. Uh, the book has all sorts of information about business and about other kinds of things that will help to prepare you for a fuller participation in conference. And then you will also receive a packet of information when you arrive at annual conference. We hope that you'll take the time to look through each piece of paper that's a part of that uh, packet of information. And then uh, 
we also uh, ask you if you are a, a first time annual conference delegate to attend the orientation for first time annual conference uh, delegates. Uh, when you uh, come to that on Saturday at 3.30, you'll be able to meet uh, Jim Beckwith and Nancy Heishman, the uh, moderator-elect, and uh, Chris Douglas, who is the annual conference director. You'll be able to ask them all sorts of questions. They'll guide you through the process, and uh, you'll find that to be a very helpful time together. One final piece is following worship on Saturday evening, there will be uh, hearings regarding items of business. So you'll be able to go to one of those hearings and uh, hear a little bit more about a particular item of business. You'll have another opportunity to ask questions and also to make suggestions. We hope that you'll take advantage of all of these ways of preparing for a fuller participation in annual conference this year. We will have several items of old business that we will deal with this year. And we want to share with you just a little bit about what is happening with the items of business. The, the first one I want to talk to you about is guidelines for implementation of the Congregational Ethics Paper. In 2010, Annual Conference set up a committee that was made up of some people from our Congregational Life staff and three persons appointed by the officers. They came back in 2011 with a report that they uh, would like to see the 1996 Ethics for congregations paper to be updated and revised. And Annual Conference approved that and made the decision that this would now be taken care of by the Congregational Life Ministry staff. Last year, 2012, that uh, report came back to Annual Conference saying that they will need some time to work on this. So they asked for the opportunity this coming year to simply present to us a first draft of what they're planning to do that we might get on top of it, talk about it, have some feedback, then they'll bring a final proposal in 2014. So this is one item of business we will deal with in terms of hearing more information, but we will not make a decision on it this particular year. Two other items of old business will come with a report of a need for uh, at least one more year to complete their business. Uh, the first of these is entitled Guidance for responding to the changing of Earth's climate. At annual conference in 2011, uh, this item of business was referred uh, for study to the Washington Advocacy Office of the Global Mission Partnerships. And then a working group was formed and last year that group uh, asked for another year to continue their, their work. This year they will come asking for an additional year to continue their work. Another item of old business is entitled Church of the Brethren Ecumenical Witness. Last year's conference recommended that the Mission and Ministry Board, together with the, the leadership team, appoint a, a committee that would write a vision of ecumenism for the 21st century. This year, we will come with the names of persons who have been selected to participate in uh, that committee. And uh, then when that committee completes their work, they will report to a future annual conference. So those three items of old business will not be coming to a vote this year. It will be important for us to talk about them, but they will not come for a vote. Two other old business items are going to be decided this year, however. One of them is a revision to the ministerial leadership polity. Last year's annual conference gave a first reading to what was brought and gave some feedback to the Office on Ministry about the document. The intention is that this will replace all of our previous policy, polity statements about ministerial leadership. This year we will receive an updated version and we will vote whether to adopt it or not. And it will require two-thirds vote because it will be a change in polity. There is a study guide that perhaps you have seen and the study guide uh, is a good way to begin to get on top of some of this information while you wait for your conference booklet to arrive. The other one that we will be deciding on this year is about more equitable representation on the Mission and Ministry Board. Last year the Southern Pennsylvania District brought a query asking whether the bylaws of the Church of the Brethren should be amended 
to more equitably apportion mission and ministry board representation within the membership of the church. Last year's annual conference referred this concern to the Mission and Ministry Board, and this year the Mission and Ministry Board will bring a proposal in response, and the delegates will vote on it. There uh, is also one new business item. It is a query from the Verlina District. It is entitled Biblical Authority. It asks whether the 1979 annual conference statement on biblical inspiration and authority is still relevant and represents the position of the denomination today. I would encourage you to read that 1979 statement on biblical inspiration and authority. You can find it on the annual conference website. Uh, you hover over a section that is entitled conference business and choose the section that is entitled statements and resolutions and you'll find it. Now with this being a query Standing committee options are to adopt the query, to refer it for further study by somebody in an agency, or to create a committee of our own from annual conference to study it, or to respectfully return the query. And we'll get that recommendation from standing committee and as a delegate body, we'll decide what we want to do with their recommendation. By the way, at the March Mission and Ministry Board meeting, uh, there were three items that came up that need to become a part of the business of annual conference this summer in uh, Charlotte. Uh, one is that the Mission and Ministry Board Executive Committee uh, has asked that uh, there be uh, three at-large members rather than two, and that requires a change in bylaws, which will require a two-thirds uh, majority vote. And so that's one item. Uh, another item is a resolution uh, against drone warfare and I'd like to read just the first uh, prayer, paragraph, which is actually some scripture that calls us into uh, uh, an understanding of why we felt uh, compelled to, uh, to uh, write this resolution. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all, beloved. And it continues to go on to express these concerns that come out of Romans chapter 12. And then uh, there is also uh, really an item that I personally am very excited about, and, and that is uh, recognizing uh, a new uh, uh, group of brethren in Spain. Let me tell you a little of the story. Some of our brothers and sisters in the Dominican Church of the Brethren moved to Spain for employment and started several churches in Spain. And now those churches have asked to be recognized as Church of the Brethren congregations. And so that came before Mission and Ministry Board, and now we're passing on to the, the delegate body uh, the decision to accept formally uh, these churches as Global Church of the Brethren partners. My counsel, uh, as you think about all these business items, is to decide which way you lean, as you, which way you might be thinking about voting on this, but come with an open heart and an open mind, ready to listen to your brothers and sisters and to try to discern the mind of Christ together. That's how we work at things in the Church of the Brethren and I think you'll find it a very important experience together. One of the highlights of annual conference each year is the worship services, and we've said very little about our worship together. Most of us don't have the opportunity to sing with a group of thousands of singers, and so that opportunity that we'll have this year in Charlotte, North Carolina, will be worth the price of admission alone. We hope that you will begin to prepare yourself spiritually uh, for an encounter with the living God as we invite God to move in our midst. One of the ways that you can do that is go to the www.brethren.org site that Jim mentioned a bit earlier. Go to the annual conference site within the brethren.org site 
And when you're on the annual conference site, you'll find the annual conference logo move in our midst. And then look below that, and you'll find a list of resources to help prepare. One of them is a prayer guide. And I hope that you, if you haven't found that already, that you'll go to that and we'll begin praying together with us day by day as we prepare ourselves spiritually for an encounter with God in Charlotte this summer. And then while we're at conference, there will be many resources for you to take a look at. There'll be some in the exhibits. There will be opportunities in various insight sessions to get in touch with resources you can take back to your congregation to help work at spiritual renewal and strength in the church. I invite you to pace yourself. People can be overwhelmed, especially if this is your first annual conference. Pace yourself so that what you are able to take in will be meaningful for what you can take back to your congregation as your congregation's delegate. I look forward to seeing you in Charlotte. Well, once again, I want to say welcome. We invite you to Charlotte, North Carolina, this June 29th through July the 3rd. We are hoping together that the living God will move in our midst to touch and transform our lives individually and the life of our church. Thank you and God bless you.